today. The problems that I noticed is that the house is extremely disorganized. If your children live in an environment that isn't organized and isn't structured, their mind is going to wander. They're not going to be able to go to school and sit and focus. And I want to get to the root of that problem. I can't walk through the living room without, without stepping on something and twisting well, my ankle. The problem is I don't have enough time. Your method of cleaning up is get the broom, make a big pile, get the kids to throw everything in their closet. That's the way you kind of do it. Yeah. To me, it's out of, out of sight, out of mind. And that's the best way to get it done. So it works it, for you? Yes, it does. But it doesn't work for you. No, absolutely not. It just oh. seems like it's faster and easier if I just do it myself. You can't do it all yourself. I guess I don't even think that they can do it, and that's probably part of the problem. You enable these children too much. Mommy, right. help me. I am helping you. You do everything for them. That's how the house ends up in a mess. What we really need to work towards here is finding that middle ground. We're going to find it. We're going to work towards it. I want you on the same team. Right now, we have opposing sides. So I'm going to go. I'm going to formulate this plan. This family is going to work much better. All right? Yeah, OK. Hang in there. Thank you. All right. My goal with this family is to change their lifestyle. I want them to learn how to live a more organized life. I think it's going to be a bumpy ride. I got up early this morning to give the Pauls their new rules, only to find Dad off to work and Cindy in a tizzy. My biggest concern is getting her on that bus at 8.03. The bus stop is right in front of my house, and we are constantly missing the bus. Oh, Michael, you just spilled your milk. Kimmy, do you know where your shoes are? I know. In your room. With the bus mere moments away, I notice Kimmy doesn't lift a finger to help find her lost shoe. She's obviously used to mom doing everything for her. And I can't find her shoes. Kimmy, are you sure it's in here? We are constantly playing catch up. I am never on time anywhere. I have like five clocks in this house and I have no idea which one is right. It's probably not that one. Hold on, I gotta find out what time it really is. Hold on. It is 7.57. This is the most disorganized woman I have ever seen. Right now, I cannot find her other shoe, and it is sitting dangerously close to the bus time. As usual, I'm not together. Not in there. Maybe it's over here. Get your old shoes on her, right? Hurry up. Did we miss it yet? Kimmy and I missed the bus, even though the bus stop is right here in front of our house. Oh my God, there's Kimmy's other shoe, right in front of my face. This family is missing the bus in more ways than one. And before things can get better, they're going to get much, much worse. After a day of observation, this much is clear. The Paul family is a mess. It's time to set down the new rules. Today, I brought Nanny's rules. Now, these rules apply when I'm here and when I'm gone. So we start with rule number one, get organized and stay organized. Who knows what organized means? Clean up. It means cleaning up and keeping it clean. Number two is stick to a schedule. That means you do the same things at the same time every day. I have like five clocks in this house and I have no idea which one is right. And no miss the school bus. And no missing the school bus, that's right, ever. Ever. We never miss a school bus. Number three, everyone is responsible for their own stuff. You guys need to get yourselves dressed. No more mommy helping anybody get dressed. So is everybody ready? We're going to roll up our sleeves and we've got to get to work. I'm going to get started. I have been thinking a long time about how I would react to somebody else coming in my house. Because to be honest, I have never had uh, a babysitter. I will admit I'm a little hesitant about this whole thing. Are you ready? Yeah. ready? Steady? Ready. 
Go! This family may not like me very much over the next few days. At the end of this lesson, they'll be grateful. Last night, I noticed that the children had absolutely no table manners. You gotta keep those in your plate. And since we were in the dining room, I thought it would be best to start the teaching there. So today, we are going to practice manners. Quick table manners class. All right, we sit nicely at the table. Like this? Like this. Oh, we don't put our elbows on the table. We're going to take our napkin. We're going to shake it out. Put it nicely on our lap. This may take longer than expected. Oh, we don't spill on the fancy party. While teaching the children table manners, I notice Cindy seems to be getting a bit put out. I hope she can handle all this. When we're finished with our food, we put our fork and our knife at five o'clock. Remember that it's o'clock. Put our napkin on our plate and we say, Please may I be excused? Please. Yes, you may. It's a little bit overwhelming right now to have Nanny Deb here in our house taking over. Good job, good job, good job, good job. <laughs> when teaching children responsibility, it's always best to keep the lessons fun. So I'm going to give the kids their own set of rules. Let's see how Cindy handles it. Who wants to open the nanny bag? Hi. Okay, let's see what we have in the nanny bag. Okay, we have Kimmy's rules, Bethany's rules. Once the children begin cleaning up after themselves, Cindy will have no excuses for not putting the rest of our house in order. You want to read them, Kimmy? Everybody has the same rules. Make your bed, get yourself dressed, pick rainbow. up your toys, keep your room tidy, and pick your clothes for the next day. Yes, excellent. I believe that children need rules and consistency in their life. They need to live in a home that is organized, and they need to follow a schedule. It makes them feel safe, happy, and well-adjusted. Let's see how we do with rule number one. Make your own bed. What would you like to do first? Would you like to make your bed first or pick up your clothes first? I want to do the bed. She would like to help make the beds. Let's Take everything see. off all first. All right, excellent. Then you first put on this one, mm -hmm. then you put on the warm one, and then you put on the big one. All right, let's see. Can you do it without help or would you like some help? Without help. As the kids begin making their beds, I notice Cindy's even more distressed which is very troubling. I like the idea of giving my children the responsibility of making their beds, but I'm just not so sure that they can do this. Especially because I might not like the way they do it. Jump, jump, how is that gonna keep us warm? They put it on horizontally instead of vertically and it's driving me a little crazy. Cindy should be happy to see her kids finally learning responsibility. There you go! Excellent work! This is a little hard to sit here and watch this. Cindy's anxieties are becoming annoying. I'm beginning to think that Cindy simply refuses to let her kids grow up at all. I would probably already be finished making these beds and onto another room. Then go back to another room and leave them to it. Children. I felt a little defeated, like I couldn't handle it. I'm not certain how this will all end, but be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. I've shown the kids the rules and they've gotten